and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Aegis Logistics Limited Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero, on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Raj Chandaria. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Hey, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm joined by our Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Murad Moladina, and Ms. Payal Dave from our Investor Relations team. And we will be presenting uh, the Q4 and the full year uh, results ended 31st March 2024. Before I move on to discuss the financial performance for the full year FY24, um, I'm pleased to inform you that the Board of Directors has recommended a final dividend of 2 rupees uh, or 200% per share uh, of the face value of 1 rupee. The company has already declared and paid 2 interim dividends of 2 rupees uh, in February 2024 and 2.5 rupees in August of 23 for the financial year at 31st March, and therefore the total dividend for the, for the full year is amounts to 6 rupees 50 uh, paisa per share, uh, or 650% uh, for uh, every share of face value 1 rupee. Um, as you know, um, you know the, as far as the vision and the mission of this company, uh, the core purpose is to be an enabler in the transition to a more sustainable India, and uh, given that our business lies at the very heart of that uh, necessary transition, uh, our mission to store and distribute bulk liquids and gases uh, in a safe and sustainable manner is ever more critical. And as a company that is building and operating energy infrastructure, uh, we believe that we can play our part in moving India uh, from using dirty fuels to using cleaner fuels. Now, as far as our strategy is concerned, uh, of course, this remains consistent uh, with the mission, and we continue uh, to look for M&A opportunities. Uh, during the year, uh, we have completed several acquisitions. We continue to expand our, dist uh, to expand our distribution footprint by installing more LPG filling plants and signing up more distributors. And we continue the build out of the CapEx plan that we kicked off last year, and I'll give you more details of that, uh, of the progress of that uh, later on in the call. Uh, in financial highlights, uh, we have, uh, I'm delighted to announce that we have reached a significant milestone uh, by surpassing 1,000 in normalized EBITDA uh, for uh, FY24, and our liquid division has also reached uh, record revenues and EBITDA, and our logistics and distribution segment uh, has seen its highest ever volumes. Operating EBITDA for the liquid division was 396 crores, and for the LPG division, 612 crores. Uh, we also delivered record volumes in our LPG logistics business of 4. 1 million metric tons uh, and distribution volumes of 0 0.56 uh, million tons. And our profits for FY24 amounted to 672 crore rupees, marking a 32% year over year growth. The outstanding performance uh, aligns with our guidance of achieving uh, a 25% cumulative average growth. Uh, in uh, earnings per share over the last th over the next three years, and I'm pleased to note uh, that we have maintained, in fact, a, an EPS of 25% uh, since uh, 2022 uh, after our joint venture with Bopac. So I think you'll agree with me that these results are consistent with our quarterly updates during the past year. The main drivers for this have been the continued growth of the volumes in our Kanla terminal growth in our distribution business, and continued growth in liquids uh, through the addition of new capacity and full utilization of newly commissioned uh, tanks. 
furthermore, as, as the new projects that are now being implemented are commissioned, we are confident that the positive momentum we saw in FY24 will be sustained in FY25 and onwards. As I mentioned in our last uh, call, uh, you know, the group is in the middle of a major expansion program, and uh, I can provide an update on the progress of this, uh, of this program. Let me start with JNPT port. Uh, we established a foothold uh, in this port in the second, uh, in the second port of Mumbai uh, at, at JNPT uh, with our new 110,000 kiloliter terminal, which will be uh, commissioned later this year. It's uh, proceeding well on time and on budget. Moving on to Pipao, as you may have read in the news last year, Gujarat Pipao port revamped its work to handle very large gas carriers, VLGCs, and uh, because of that, uh, we have uh, increased our volumes there, and we have achieved also a major milestone by loading over 1,000 LPG uh, railway rakes at this port. We are now regularly bringing VLGCs to Pipal uh, port and achieving these record rail movements uh, to our clients. We're also expanding our LPG capacity at that port by adding two uh, cryogenic tanks uh, uh, with a capacity of 45, total capacity of 45,000 metric tons, which is expected to be commissioned by Q1 of FY26. And they've also commissioned recently a, an LPG bottling plant there, enhancing both the throughput and distribution capabilities in that uh, port. Uh, additionally, that port has uh, announced uh, its investment in a new liquid berth to meet the growing demand for liquid cargoes, cargoes which are also driving economic growth in Gujarat and beyond. And with the Kandla Gorakhpur pipeline uh, expected to connect into Pipawa, this will eventually make Pipawa LPG terminal a really important hub to handle issues. Moving on then to Mangalore. Um, we successfully acquired a specialized storage terminal uh, with a capacity of 44,168 kiloliters in this last year. This acquisition meets the growing demand for specialized storage uh, with the heating arrangements of up to 230 degrees centigrade in our liquid division. Uh, this expands our facilities uh, at Mangalore under the Aegis Gopak Terminals Limited. The newly acquired capacity is already operational uh, and with additional capacity under construction uh, expected to come online in phases by the end of uh, FY25. Following these expansions, our total liquid capacity at Mangalore will reach 154,000 kiloliters and we are, uh, we are uh, constructing an additional 71,000 kiloliters in liquid that will be operational in the next uh, 12 to 15 months. Our cryogenic LPG project, uh, the 85,000 ton uh, uh, cryogenic LPG project is proceeding well on schedule and expected to be uh, definitely commissioned on time. Uh, as far as Kandla port is concerned, uh, in, in um, Q4 of FY24, we commissioned 35,000 kiloliters of liquid tankage, bringing our total capacity to just shy of a million uh, metric tons, or 970,000 to be precise. We are additionally constructing uh, 25,000 kiloliters of tankage, which will be operational next year. Over the past two years, we have experienced rapid growth at this port, uh, capturing a significant market share in both our liquids and LPG business. Uh, the LPG bottling plant uh, uh, at Kandla has also been commissioned and is now generating revenue. Uh, at Kochi, we acquired 16,000 kiloliter, uh, a 16,000 kiloliter liquid storage terminal during the year, and the same is performing well. We're also expanding our capacity at this port by another 25,000 kiloliters of liquids. Uh, at Haldia Port, the expansion uh, at Haldia uh, to set up an additional 50,000 kiloliters was also completed during the year. With all these acquisitions and uh, uh, expansions, our total storage capacity uh, over all over India will be almost 2 million kiloliters. We plan to construct 
an additional 300,000 kiloliters in this new uh, fiscal year of FY25 to fulfill our vision of creating a network of terminals throughout the coastline of India. So, uh, as far as the expectations for the business uh, in the coming financial year, uh, assuming that the buoyant economic trends continue, we expect to also to continue delivering earnings growth in line with the trend of the past couple of years and reaping the benefits of the investments that we have made in both our terminaling business as well as the distribution business. You may recall that this time last year, we had set out the CapEx plan of about 4,500 crores by FY27, now almost 50% of which comprised of these two cryogenic LPG terminals in Pepao and Mangalore, as well as the various liquid expansions in Haldia, Mangalore, GNPT, Kandla, and Kochi, which are proceeding on time and on budget. And we expect to commission the Pipao and Mangalore uh, cryogenic terminals uh, in Q1 of FY26. And the pace of CapEx, the pace of CapEx spending, uh, we expect this to continue beyond FY27 uh, as, as we look at opportunities in the pipeline. I'm also finally pleased to announce that in the field of new energy and in keeping with our vision, we are, in fact, proceeding with our first, uh, the, with the first of our ammonia terminals, which I've mentioned in the past, but we are definitively announcing it now. Uh, uh, and this will be located in the state of Gujarat. Uh, we, expect to cons uh, we expect to commence construction uh, during this fiscal year after receiving all the necessary permits from the regulatory authorities. And we expect to build more ammonia terminals as this business matures. I think we'll endeavor to become vertically integrated in this business just like in the ammonia business, just like we are in the LPG business. So with that, uh, I'm going to hand over to uh, Mr. Molodina to present the financial performance in detail. Uh, Murat, over to you. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, continuing, uh, both our divisions uh, de delivered a strong performance for the full year ended 31st March 2024, driven by the highest lifetime revenue and profitability in liquid division once again and the highest lifetime profitability and volumes in the gas division. For the group as a whole, EBITDA for the year ended 31st March 24 was 1,008 crores, an increase of 25% compared to the same period last year. Profit after tax increased by 32% to 672 crores in FY24. Earnings per share also increased to 16.22 as compared to 13.19 for the full year ended 31st March 24, an increase of 23%. I would now like to pro provide you with some more details on the individual segments. First, liquid business. Liquid has delivered another record stellar performance for the full year ended 31st March 24. The revenues were 549 crores, an increase of 31% year on year basis. We delivered the highest ever EBITDA at 396 crores versus 272 crores in the previous year which is an increase of 46%. This improved performance can be attributed to the new capacity coming online as well as acquisitions at Kandla, Kochi, and Mangalore. LPG business. LPG division has also delivered record volumes in our logistics business, delivering a growth of 23% by handling 4.10 million tons of LPG in the last year. In our distribution business, has not only sustained the performance, but has delivered a growth of 13%, by distributing 5.6 lakhs metric ton of LPG across verticals. The above mentioned factors has helped us to achieve a record EBITDA crossing 1,000 crore, a growth of 25% year on year. Our PAT has also grown by 32% to 672 crores. Now let me give you volume details of each sub-segment. Throughput volumes. The LPG volumes for the full year ended 31st March handled at all our four terminals Mumbai, Haldia, Kandla, and Pipawa were 4.1 million metric tons versus 3.33 million metric tons same period last year, an increase of 23%. This marks the second consecutive year where we have achieved double-digit growth in this division. Distribution volumes. We had good growth in our distribution business to full year ended 31st March 24. The volumes increased by 31%, 13% as against same period volumes last year. 
the commercial, industrial, and auto segment combined had 559.7 thousand metric tons versus 494.2 thousand metric tons last year. Additionally, the margins of these divisions have also have actually improved. Sourcing volume. The sales volume of sourcing business for the full year ended 31st March 24 was 798.4 thousand metric tons versus 895.3 thousand metric tons in the same period last year. The financial position of the company remains robust with low debt, strong cash flow, and a solid balance sheet. With this, I now hand over this line to the moderator to start the question and answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of uh, Priyanka Biswas from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations to the entire GIST team for uh, such a strong result. Uh, so that's first. Uh, what I wanted to ask, uh, since you have finally taken the step on ammonia, so if you can give some color on it that uh, what this static capacity represents, let's say, in terms of a full year number, I mean, when it is commissioned, like in a million ton quantum. And uh, after that, what sort of target you have, like uh, in a million ton per annum number to, to scale up the ammonia? And if you can walk through the financials of the project, like essentially what can be the expected EBITDA per ton, the returns of those assets, like those sort of things, if you can walk us through. Uh, yeah, uh, Priyanka, uh, so ammonia, this, you know, is the first terminal uh, that we are getting into uh, construction of. And this is uh, to be of a static capacity of 36,000 metric tons. Now, in ammonia, uh, it's, it's more like uh, liquid business. So you, you can turn around uh, at, at most uh, three times. So effectively, if you if you look at uh, uh, 36,000 metric tons, it's like 1.2 million tons. That is the maximum you can go to. Uh, the if, if if you take all the three turnarounds, uh, then then it would be somewhere around 1,000 rupees uh, revenue, like uh, LPG, which you will get. But if you look at static capacity, then it should be around 3,000 rupees. So. You, you start with one turnaround, and then uh, as the business matures, uh, you would uh, likely grow from there on. But the max you can do is three times. So if I understand it correctly, so you can do effectively an EBITDA of something like 1,000 rupees per ton, right? I mean, yes. ammonia handled. So that's the correct just assessment. Under, same like LPG, just a little under 1,000. Okay. And uh, on gas, uh, since uh, we are the, on the gas, what I see is that uh, from 3Q versus 4Q, the volumes were kind of similar, the logistics volumes, and distribution was also broadly there, slightly lower. But yet I see that the EBITDA for the gas division is meaningfully higher than what was in 3Q. So has there been some margin expansion? And if it is so, where has it happened? Is it in distribution? Or is it in, uh, let's say, logistics, yes, has, which way? It has happened in distribution on account of procurement efficiencies, which we could get in this quarter. So the, the, the margins have uh, improved uh, in, in Q4 as far as distribution volumes are concerned. So this procurement efficiency, is it sustainable? So what I mean is, like uh, in FY25, can we, like, let's say, on a pattern basis, expect s such sort of margin to sustain? Let's say. Uh, it depends. Uh, so well, I, I suggest that we, we should not be comparing quarter to quarter. But if you look at yearly average uh, margins, I think those are sustainable, and it it may it may vary quarter to quarter. 
But as the volumes will grow, the procurement efficiencies will uh, be more and more. So it all depends on how much we are able to scale up. As I have said in past, when Mangalore, Mangalore cryogenic and Pipawa cryogenic comes up, which is basically in FY26, you will really see a step up in distribution volumes as, as, as uh, also the procurement efficiencies. But FY25, we should carry on with uh, the margins which we have achieved, uh, uh, FY24, with a no normal scale-up in uh, volumes, uh, like we always do, 20, 25, 30%. Well, just uh, the final question, maybe I'll come back into the queue later. So if you can give us some idea like uh, what sort of logistics and distribution volumes uh, should one reasonably expect in uh, fy25 you can give a broad range i see even that will be fine i think if you take the run rate of uh, the fourth quarter for logistics volume uh, and a slight improvement on that uh, i think we, we should we should uh, May, uh, we should achieve uh, 5 million plus uh, for FY25 if uh, all things are normal as far as uh, you know, all other factors are concerned. Distribution volumes, we have always said that we expect a 25% uh, increase from year on. Okay. And can you give us a similar thing in liquids? Because we have seen the liquid margins also expanding massively in this quarter. So what sort of sustainable rate we should see going forward? Okay, please look at the margins on yearly basis. Uh, quarter to quarter depends on uh, the type of products we store. Sometimes take or pay comes in. Sometimes so you have to look uh, for uh, look at the margins when uh, uh, for the whole year, and then uh, those would be sustainable next year also. Liquid also depends on how soon, how fast your capacities under construction come up and are commissioned, as well as, as you are aware, M&A opportunities, which uh, two years in succession we have been able to get, and uh, hope so also uh, going forward. So depending on all of that, uh, you would see. But again, we, we retain our uh, guidance. The only guidance we give is the EP, EPS uh, increase year on year. Mm -hmm of CAGR 25%, and if you work back, I think what we have just said about gas and liquid, uh, you would get to those uh, kind of numbers to achieve a EPS CAGR of 25%. So even the liquid revenues was very high, I mean, this in this quarter. So is this run rate doable, I mean, going forward? Let's, other than the margin. It also have come up in the last quarter, as well as, like I said, uh, there are always... Uh, you know, take or pay, sometimes take or pays are there, sometimes type of product. But uh, you should see it uh, year as a whole. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's all for me, right? Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Jolion Lu from Amiral Gestion. Please go ahead. Hi, hi. No, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, Specifically, could you comment on your liquid um, segment this quarter? I think the capacity went up 14%, including the M&A, but the revenue obviously went up 66%, which is a fantastic result. So um, is there any one-off here? You know, could you break down the 66% between M&A and um, the capacity that came online? No, like we have just answered that. So liquid, you have to see it uh, not quarter to quarter, but for the whole year. And during the year, we have increased our capacity. We are almost 2 million now as compared to 1.6 in the previous year. Uh, and, of course, uh, sometimes you do get opportunities for take-or-pay con contracts uh, where uh, e even if the use is not there, you uh, get the revenues. So these, uh, you have to look at it on a yearly basis. And uh, we expect the capacity to grow next year also uh, by uh, almost 300,000 uh, CBM. So it's more capex uh, growth uh, that is leading to revenue and a bit. Uh, and, uh, you know, most of, most of the time, this uh, capacity addition is at the existing sites 
where uh, the uh, expenses remain the same and uh, the entire increase in the revenue flows down to the EBITDA uh, because you are operating uh, with the same kind of resources uh, as, you are, as you have expanded in the existing sites. Okay, so we are at 2 million this year. Next year, FY25 will end at uh, 2.3 million is what you are saying. Yes, that is what we will end it, end with, hopefully. Okay. Uh, just one more question. Maybe could you comment on the KGPL or any like government related uh, projects? Uh, because I think there will be a significant driver of volume in the next uh, one to one half year. Uh, Again, uh, KGPL is progressing well yeah. and uh, is expected to come on uh, line, uh, you know, timed uh, with our cryogenic, which is expected by end of FY25 and Q1 FY26. So we hope uh, both to, uh, to commence uh, around the same time, and uh, that, that will certainly, uh, we hope, will bring uh, volume upside as far as gas business is concerned. Okay, so no delays on the government side? Yeah, so far, so good. Okay, fingers crossed. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Yash Dedia from Maximal Capital. Please go ahead. Congratulations, sir, on a very good set of numbers. Congratulations to the whole Aegis team. Uh, sir, on the liquid part, I know you clarified that uh, the whole year should be looked at as normalized number for revenue. But I just wanted to understand uh, the T Corp pay which we get uh, is for the not using the facility as per the contract. Correct? Yeah, those are, uh, yeah, sometimes, yes. When the capacity is higher, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so our capacity utilization currently is at what level around? For liquid, uh, overall, overall? 87%. 87%. Overall. 87%. And do we see it dropping or the contracts are uh, long-term in nature? No, liquid contracts are always uh, around uh, one-year types of contracts, which we have hmm. always, always said in the past. And hmm. capacity utilization literally has no uh, meaning as far as liquid storage business is concerned. Hmm. So you have to look at your realizations per uh, capacity that you have installed. And that is how we generally look at, which is like 3,000 rupees uh, per CBN uh, capacity that you have would be the revenue. Yeah. Yeah, so the uh, turns which we get are pretty much normal uh, every quarter on quarter. Uh, most of the time, yes. But it depends on what types of uh, product you uh, store. In a yeah, so the, the margin could different could be different because okay. of the type of uh, product which is stored but volumes generally remain the same yes. volumes generally remain the same and the revenue as the realization as well so in realization uh, is there a, a very vast difference in terms of product uh, differentiation or the yes. differences yeah, yeah 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 for example vegetable oil could be uh, 125 rupees or 150 rupees a month, whereas mm -hmm. an, uh, a special specialty chemical or an acid could be 600, 700, 1000 rupees. Could okay. be 10x, 8x, 10x. So what we are guiding is for, say for example, in this quarter we got a revenue of 193 crore from liquid, and this could be the reason. Uh, the reason could be say because of better product mix in the liquid, which was there. Various reasons, not just yeah. uh, product type. Various yeah, reasons. So one of the reason is that. At, yeah, one of the reasons is that. But you have to look at the whole year because, you know, sometimes you uh, things come in one particular quarter, uh, but that's how you plan things. So you have to look at the whole year. Yeah, but uh, majorly the the turns wouldn't change then, uh, and the take or pay is also based on the turns. Say, for example, if the capacity was booked and was not utilized, then they will pay take or pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Correct, correct. So that, then, then, that then the major major variance variance should be the product mix. Yep. But if there are spot contracts, then the volumes also matter because if they evacuate faster, the next mm -hmm. set of product will get you additional revenue. So the more turn more turns will happen. Yeah, the more turns turns will happen. See, it's a combination of many things. This is why you cannot pinpoint to one particular thing. And so this quarter's product mix, which was there, uh, oh, do we uh, expect it to sustain, or that also we should look at uh, on the whole year? Whole year revenue of liquid uh, has to be seen, and we see a growth from there in the next year because of capacity addition, because of type of products that we would store may change. And mm -hmm. also because of the turns or uh, the number of turns, uh, the evacuation of products faster. So it, all the factors put together is what makes us believe that next year also we'll see a healthy growth in liquid business. So uh, around uh, 10 to 15 percent would be the growth from capex that the uh, capacity which we are adding. Yes, uh, yes. definitely 10 to 15 percent on account of the capacity addition. And uh, more could come, uh, say, as a result of better product mix, yeah. which would be approximately how much? Yeah, I, we, 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 we cannot predict that, mm -hmm. but what mm -hmm. we always guide is that we work with whatever uh, levers we have, the range of business uh, that we have, liquid, gas, in gas, throughput, distribution, etc. We we and we we try our best to have a a, a growth in our profits. Uh, which is basically boils down to EPS, and that's what we advise. That we we are we are quite confident of delivering a 25% EPS growth year on year. Uh, it could be it could be a, a combination of uh, many things. Sometimes liquid growth, sometimes gas, throughput, distribution. But the end result would definitely uh, the confidence is there of the management, and we would be able to deliver a 25%. Okay, got it, got it. And just one more on uh, a bit up a turn for uh, logistic division. Was it uh, similar or was there a spike in it? Yeah, around 1100 rupees. Around 1100 only. And the distribution uh, a bit up a turn was more because of procurement efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Dhruv Bhatia from Bank of India Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. So my first question, if you could just, you know, you talked about a little bit about the ammonia terminal and the commercials. Uh, could you, I mean, I didn't get the uh, exact number. You said it's 1,000 rupees per ton on uh, 3x turns that you're looking at. Uh, no, so you take it like this, that the uh, re revenues are between 2,500 to 3,500 uh, per static capacity uh, metric ton. Okay, that's the revenue. Yeah, so but if you take the number of tons, uh, three times, then you have to divide by three, which is why I said 1,000 rupees. Okay, and what about the profitability, sir? Yeah, yeah that's uh, like uh, LPG, 90% uh, EBITDA. Okay, because the, when I'm doing the calculation, it's coming to roughly about, you know, 10 to 10, 12 crores of EBITDA, right? Huh? Oh, uh, sorry, 120 crores of EBITDA. You missed one zero, yeah. <laughs> 120 crores of EBITDA is what we're looking at from, at, at pull or three times asset turn. Yeah, again, a 25% IRR kind of thing. And who would be, you know, I mean, like an LPG business where, you know, the LPG is getting imported and you are storing for on behalf of the customer. In this case, could you just talk about a little bit on the industrial landscape, you know, who would be the type of customers that you're looking at and, uh, you know, generally each business that you enter into or any new capacity that you add, so, uh, you yes. always have a customer, anchor customer or a customer who's telling you, you know, probably, you know, start, uh, you know, can you put up a X capacity in a certain location. So in this case, could you to give you a little this, more color about it? Yeah, this so, uh, ammonia terminal, please understand, will come on stream in 24 months, right? So it's 2026, number one. Number two, this uh, ammonia terminal would be equipped to handle uh, import as well as exports. 
Uh, so e effectively, it means that it can store gray, blue, green, any type of ammonia because the molecule is the same. Uh, therefore, we believe uh, with the kind of uh, marketing, uh, internal uh, marketing research that we have done, that there will be enough uh, demand uh, either of gray ammonia, uh, which would be more of imports, or green ammonia uh, for exports by the time our terminal is commissioned, which is why we have announced the first out of uh, many more that are expected to come uh, in our company going forward. But we wait. As the business will mature, uh, we would uh, announce uh, more such investments. For now, we are announcing only one at our existing site. So uh, as you can understand, uh, most of the uh, infrastructure is in place in Pipawa. So there is a jetty, we have our people, etc. So the only cost is the capex and the power. So EBITDA margin would also be very high. The lease is also uh, already been uh, absorbed. So that is the reason we 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 we, uh, we have uh, decided to go ahead uh, with this ammonia uh, term. Okay. Like every other uh, capacity that you build, you generally do everything in house. In this case, also because you know you've got that absolutely in house. Yes, everything will be done in house. Yeah, it's because the infrastructure is similar to that of LPG. Understood. And so, just two bookkeeping questions. Uh, you did mention throughput EBITDA per uh, you know ton in FY24 was 1100, which generally was uh, you know 1000 rupees on a you know steady basis. So one is, uh, you know, is this sustainable and what has led to the improvement? So as the capacity utilization will increase, like I said, uh, the revenue will flow down to the EBITDA and the percentage is a static fix. So we would definitely see an upside in that manner. Uh, so it is not that the expenses are getting reduced. It is just that the revenue is increasing, is increasing and the expenses uh, are not increasing at that pace at which the utilization of the terminal increases, which is why you will see uh, uh, better uh, EBITDA margins per ton as the utilization uh, of the capacity uh, goes up. Okay. And what was the distribution EBITDA per ton in FY24? Uh, it has uh, increased, uh, so it would be somewhere around uh, uh, between 4,500 to 5,000 rupees. And so last question, because, you know, this year, I think, uh, your, uh, this year, the minority contribution to the profit was somewhere about 15 odd percent, though this quarter it was on the higher side at, I think, about 17 to 18 uh, percent. Again, you know, you've, you've explained in the past about how it's, it's structured, but, uh, you know, going forward, should it be considered at about 17, 18 percent just from modeling purpose? I will not be able to help you all on that, but yes, uh, I think... Uh, the way it has been structured and the way uh, uh, at present it can change going forward, but we expect uh, minority interest to be between 15 to 20 percent, yes. Perfect, sir. Thank you and all the best. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Chirag from Budrani Finance. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Uh, just wanted to get an update on this cryogenic ammonia uh, project that you are talking about. Sir, you are doing a capex of uh, uh, at, at Pipao and Mangalore. So, is it the same or is it different? Uh, we, we, we expect, because there are some additional facilities which will be needed for ammonia. So, at present, we have said that it will cost us up to uh, approximately 500 crores, but we'll come up with... Uh, uh, as, as we finalize everything uh, with the permit uh, getting in place, uh, we will keep updating the numbers as we go. So, so sir, this 5,000 ton and 85,000 ton of LPG, cryogenic LPG tank, they are different from the ammonia, right? The, yes, the yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's completely yeah. different. Yeah. Okay, okay. Second thing is, sir, when you are explaining the metric, uh, you said 36,000 metric tons. So, that is the capacity for ammonia tanks, you are saying, right? Yeah, the static capacity. Static capacity and then the churn of three times and a thousand rupee a bit up per ton. That is maximum that can happen. And we are not saying it will happen uh, from day one. At, at, at max. Correct? Yeah. Okay, okay. And for that, we are looking at a 500 crore kind of a number, right? Um, yeah, as of, as of now. 
ओके सर ओके ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच सर थैंक यू एंड द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ अंकुश शाह फ्रॉम क्वासर कैपिटल प्लीज गो हेड yeah hi sir congratulations on a very good set of numbers so just one question on the distribution business uh, uh, have you read the announcement that gujarat gas has announced a eoi to uh, link uh, natural gas sales uh, with uh, propane pricing uh, and uh, even on the recent con call uh, you know we heard the commentary that they are they are very keen and aggressive to get the volume market share so sir any comments on the competitive landscape uh, with respect to this uh, we 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 have always been saying that uh, you know uh, for us uh, morbi is not be all end all of the whole world so we we did that there, there is a lot of market beyond morbi also but we continue selling in morbi in spite of whatever steps uh, it's been now what 18 months Uh, there have been various steps taken by gujarat gas to uh, i should not say gujarat gas but natural gas to keep uh, to dominate the market of morbi but that has not been the case uh, today 40 to 50% of morbi is uh, being catered to by propane even the ceramic uh, you see propane is also having a unique advantage in ceramic and glass where there are many uh, chemical reactions and different temperatures are needed so it's not just the money it's also the quality and the use of the gas that is available for the industry so we are not saying that it will only be propane nor are we saying that it will only be natural gas as far as morbi is concerned even the industries out there would want alternatives uh, because suddenly you know there could be a volatility and then uh, like the experience last year they were in deep trouble because of volatility that happened to uh, natural gas so i think both will uh, keep supplying uh, to morbi and other industrial clusters and keep growing uh, the issue here is to replace dirty fuels you know like corn oil coal uh, etc which is still very much prevalent in uh, industries more so in small and medium scale industries so we we are also uh, very keen to expand uh, this uh, distribution uh, which we call bulk industrial dis- uh, distribution and uh, yeah so that you know all those industrial clusters like midcs gidcs uh, kidcs ridcs whatever they are they they have lot of small and medium scale uh, units which 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 are still on uh, dirty fuels like uh, diesel furnace oil coal etc so there is a huge wide world out there uh, where uh, i think both ng and uh, propane should push and replace and grow so it's okay let them link it to anything uh, it's finally uh, the procurement price that matters right uh, so we'll we'll see going forward how today even today in spite of all of that uh, we can we 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 are competing well with ng price Uh, and uh, as you know uh, lpg the biggest advantage is uh, portability that you can go by rail uh, road rail etc but ng can only be supplied by pipeline uh, and wherever pipeline network is there only there it can reach out you look at our presentation uh, which we have added a few slides on uh, the lpg advantage which is there we have tried to explain we have list all other uh, few that are there and uh, these are unique advantages and we i will not be easily to replace especially for a country like india so oh, sir see uh, this question is primarily because uh, uh, like i would say that you know uh, ages had taken a very massive lead uh, in the distribution business and the the propane uh, distribution which ages started uh, the adoption was very quick because of a very major price differential uh, and a real right to win and uh, obviously both the fuels are have uh, like you mentioned different procurement but uh, uh, like even i'm seeing in this quarter uh, once the natural gas uh, price comes closer to propane pricing 
uh, I've seen uh, natural gas uh, win in volumes versus the versus propane, uh, which which may be one of the reason why the distribution business has degrown uh, in the fourth quarter. Uh, so, any comments on that? Do not look at quarter to quarter. Uh, we again, I reiterate, it's not just ages which supplies propane to Morbi, uh, IOC, BPCL, HPCL, all of them supply. And I think in Q4 also, 40% at least, I believe, uh, was supplied uh, by, uh, was propane gas, uh, which was supplied to Morbi. So things have not uh, changed too much. And uh, LPG prices, as you know, have fallen in the month of yeah. May onwards because winter is over. So now uh, it will be the other way around. That how far can NG go down uh, as the propane and LPG prices will slide. So, so. You know, just to answer, if I can just say, so we are comfortable with competition. We we we're not concerned about both fuels will coexist, uh, and uh, I think the fact that Gujarat Gas is uh, you know forced to make announcements about how they are uh, you know linking their price to propane and this or that probably speaks more to their concerns than our concerns. So. Uh, also, let me highlight one more thing. Just look at, if you are in Mumbai, I don't know where you are based, just look I'm at the PNG yeah. price, 51 rupees is what you will see in your bill for SCM versus Morbi, 41 rupees. Okay? In spite of 41 rupees, we are competing. Just imagine PNG being sold at 51 to common man and the industry is being supplied at 41 to survive. So that's how far... Propane has pushed NG uh, if you look at Morbi. But as I said, it's not only Morbi that we supply. We continue supplying to Morbi. We have not stopped. We are still supplying quite good quantities in Morbi along with other PSUs, uh, NOCs. Uh, but there are other, uh, we supply industrial distribution from Mumbai, from Haldia, from Pipawa, all over. And as I again repeat, there is a whole wide world of dirty fuel which is there to be tapped by both NG and propane and continue to grow from year on because the volumes which these two clean fuel have are very, very low compared to the dirty fuel uh, that is presently being consumed in the country by the industry. Sure, sir. Point noted. So, second question is on, on the liquid business, uh, considering, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a very... Uh, like very above expectation quarter. Uh, like you said, uh, we should ideally look at it on a yearly basis. Uh, so, so sir, on a, on the liquid business, whenever we are setting up, because recently we have commissioned uh, a lot of uh, new uh, storage terminals. Uh, how is the uh, you know customer build up and the capacity utilization? Like, sorry, the capacity. Uh, how is the customer build up happening? And you, you know what is the IRR, which is expected, like you have mentioned, a normal stabilized IRR of uh, 25%. But uh, in general, like, does the capacity come up, uh, you know, be and before that, the customer signing happens? How is it? So, customer, there is nothing like customer signing, but we only go where there is a demand. So, we follow the demand. We don't wait for the demand to follow us. We don't believe in flag planting. Uh, so, whenever our uh, terminals are uh, commissioned, they are uh, put to use from day one. Uh, most of the time. Therefore, we uh, uh, we always have a, a, a technical, I, I can say, 100% utilization because we realize uh, the uh, expected uh, revenues and EBITDA which we plan for. And therefore, like I said, we expect the money to uh, be back uh, in our city between three to four years on an IRR of around 25%. Sure, sir. And sir, uh, on the ammonia, um, ammonia friends, sorry sir, I missed the capex number. Oh, capex number we have said approximately 500 crores for a 36,000 metric tons capacity. Okay, sure. Sir. And sir, would you uh, know the market size of ammonia, the import market size of ammonia? Just to Please understand first, the size of opportunity. Uh, as of now in India, so the users have their own terminals and they are importing as of now. But we see quite a few of uh, demand, uh, which is which is coming up from uh, chemical and fertilizer uh, companies, and uh, we easily expect this first one.
which is a very ideal location. Uh, it will be more so for green ammonia when it comes. But you know, green ammonia will give a step up in the revenues which I have just said. It will not be 3,000 or it will not be uh, 3,500, it will be much more. But it will take some time, uh, green ammonia, we still believe. So it may not be in 2026 when we commission that we will start straight away with green ammonia. We may, have, we may start with grain, which we have on ground seen enough demand uh, for our uh, terminal uh, use uh, as we have uh, planned. But going forward, we'll see quite a few upside. And we have said that like LPG, when we started only with storage, ammonia also we, we can get vertically integrated uh, uh, after a few years, uh, sourcing and distributing ammonia also. But that would take a, 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 a few years more. Sure, sir. Great. Uh, congratulations once again. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I request you to limit your questions to two per participants. The next question is from the line of Yogesh Patil from Dolat Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. Sir, am I audible? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So, quick question on the uh, Morbi side. How much is the pricing gap between the propane and natural gas at a Morbi? That's one. Uh, which one is the cheaper nowadays? And what is the, your in-house estimate about next two to three quarters, the propane demand in the Murubi region? And lastly, how many ceramic units have already installed the propane receiving infrastructure at Murubi? Oh, that is very difficult. We don't have it on hand. But the price differential between the two would uh, still be between 7 to 10 percent, with propane being cheaper. And uh, uh, I've already said 40% uh, propane, we believe, is what is being consumed in Morbi from uh, out of their total uh, gas uh, demand as of now. So, any, any bulk number out of the support, how much MMS and the propane is getting consumed and how much is the natural gas? Any ballpark figure you have? Uh, no, I think the total demand is around over a million tons. Uh, in a year, so you can calculate that 40% would be propane, 60% would be NG. And sir, you are suggesting propane is cheaper by 7-8%, right? That's propane right. is cheaper, yes. Even today. Yes. Even today. And, and lastly, just uh, any uh, in-house estimate from your side for the next two to three quarters, the propane demand in the more region. Look, we have said that you have to look at the year, not quarter to quarter. And for the year, we see uh, that the distribution volumes overall. We, we, uh, I am again repeating the world doesn't begin and end with Morbi. But overall, looking at our entire portfolio of distribution, we expect a 25 to 30 percent uh, rise in the ensuing year as compared with the previous year. Oh, okay, and, and let me uh, Sorry, can I just, add, uh, just because I know that uh, everybody is concerned about Morbi, just to reinforce what uh, what Murad has said. So we have actually four LPG terminals, uh, and they don't only serve Morbi, right? So uh, we do serve other other markets as well, and we can we to reinforce what you said that there are plenty of other industrial customers that we are also servicing. So you know that's. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot, sir, and best of you. Yeah. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Dhruv Shiv Rohira from CWC Advisors. Please go ahead. Oh, hi. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, so, firstly, no congratulations on the results. Uh, just had a couple of questions. Uh, one was on the liquid division. Uh, so typically, at least from what I've understood, the ROCV numbers seem um, a bit lower than the gas segment. So I just wanted to ask, where do you see the return on capital employed, uh, at least as of FY24 for uh, liquids? And do you see it expanding over the next few years? And what do you think would 
give you confidence that that number would grow over time. Sorry, did you say that the, the, the liquid division numbers are low? Uh, no, no, the return on capital employed numbers are lower than the uh, gas segment is what uh, my understanding was. Also, uh, both the businesses are different. The gas business is vertically integrated. We just do not only store, we also distribute and source LPG, which have no investments, but you get an uh, EBITDA coming out of those business. They are franchise driven. So therefore, the EBITDA margins and the return uh, is, will definitely be more in gas as compared to liquid. But when you are calculating return on uh, capital employed for the segments, you have to keep in mind uh, the uh, you know uh, CWIP which uh, and uh, the assets which are under construction but not yet put to use, as well as uh, uh, there are assets which which are which are put to use but at various intervals uh, during the year. And we also are carrying huge amount of cash. So if you make adjustments on all of that. And uh, in addition, always keep in mind, liquid division has got freehold land uh, at Mumbai, which you have to also make adjustment for. Once you do that, you will see uh, uh, the return on uh, capital employed uh, as, as we say, you know, 25% uh, IRR in liquid and around close to 50% IRR in LPG when it stands vertically integrated. Understood. Understood. Thanks for that. And... Uh... Secondly, so uh, could you comment on, you know, in the longer term, what you expect uh, LPG demand in India to be like? I know that's a little bit um, far-fetched, but so say that demand today in India is around... Uh, if you look at our presentation, the, the presentation talks about import of 25 million in 2034-35, whereas in the current year, uh, the imports of LPG have already crossed 20 million. So okay. you... We, we are really very conservative as far as our presentation is concerned. Uh, it is growing and we believe, uh, again, uh, the story going forward will be definitely for cooking gas, but in addition to cooking gas, there will be an energy transition story where we will see a transition. You know, 17% of energy requirement of India is still unprocessed biomass. 17% still. And the easiest thing to substitute unprocessed biomass is LPG because it is portable. You can reach it anywhere without any great investment. Yeah, you you have seen how LPG replaced kerosene, right? In past, with yes. government's uh, 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 you know push and uh, really focused uh, incentives and 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 a plan. Uh, this is what is going to happen going forward. That. Uh, in in energy uh, requirement where the present mix is completely tilted towards dirty fuel and mm -hmm. the growing energy requirement which the country is seeing on account of growing GDP, uh, you 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 there is going to be a huge demand for all clean fuels whether it is natural gas, LPG, uh, hydrogen, ammonia, renewables, all of them will see very healthy growth. Because their base is very, very low at present. And LPG, I'd like to remind you that LPG is not just a fuel, but it also is uh, used in pet care manufacturing, uh, you know, as well as, uh, exactly, yeah. So there are plenty of uh, applications for LPG, which are not uh, just for burning uh, or, or cooking, yeah. uh, you know, so on. So we expect, uh, I think this year, the, the total demand of LPG in the country was about 31 million tons. Uh, you know, that's, that's going to continue rising. Or, or uh, and I think I'll just give you a very simple example of diesel-run gensets, okay? Yes. If you look at diesel at 90 rupees and you get by burning diesel only three energy units, the cost of generating energy is 30 rupees. Whereas if you look at if you can convert it to propane run, then uh, the cost of propane is uh, around 50 rupees and uh, the units of energy you get is somewhere around 12, uh, the, the cost is only 4 or 5 rupees compared to 30 rupees. So there are so many applications, so many uh, areas where yet uh, this application of uh, clean fuel has yet to happen and is going to happen going forward. The only question is the pace. So the amount of time that it is going to take is the only question mark. 
otherwise there is no no question about uh, the transition of energy that will happen from dirty fuel to clean fuel and all these clean fuels which are very very low in volume as on today including natural gas will grow no of course so i mean uh, on I, i agree with you completely but just if you have a you know if you can give me some kind of a ball estimate uh because today i know that demand is at 1 million and where would you see this reaching in in 3 to 4 years and also how much do you expect to terminal of that so i know uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a combination of lot of factors where you should have the capacity you should have the distribution network you should have the product you should have the uh, shipping there are hundreds of things which have to be aligned for any any energy product for that matter and uh, uh, there's the demand also to mature uh, you know it it depends on the income effect as the income effect is going to happen uh, there will be less resistance to switch to clean fuels so there there are number of uh, factors but what can be for sure is that there will be a healthy growth year on year going forward for several decades now and uh, as far as propane also known one thing the availability will not be an issue for coming two or three decades because of shale gas that that is there uh, that is happening and uh, uh, that that is going to uh, ensure uh, abundant availability of uh, lpg going forward and looking at the portability of the product looking at almost zero uh, greenhouse effect uh, potential ghp if you look at as far as propane is concerned it's com- is almost zero and you look at uh, the en- environment pollution uh, boards who uh, what standard they give if you go for a renewal now they will ask from you that wh- how what is your plan to substitute diesel uh, from the gen set etc so the awareness and environment becoming a very sensitive issue you look at the climate change that is happening the heat that we are facing is all because of greenhouse effect etc that, uh, uh, that is there but everything takes time everything has 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 to happen in some time it cannot happen overnight and the pace no one can no one can uh, project or uh, predict is such but i think uh, for us whatever 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 we are doing we feel there is sufficient uh, there would be sufficient demand uh, to get us where we want to be uh, as far as uh, throughput is concerned as far as profitability is concerned so if we if we compress it and look at only our company i think we have enough on our plate as opportunities in this sector to grow and thrive going forward understood and thank you for that uh just a last quick one on that Sorry you see this uh, shiv sir can you come uh, in the f- queue for the follow up question sure the next question is from the line of lavanya from ubs please go ahead oh hello uh, am i audible sir oh yes, yes. you are yeah uh, congratulations sir on the set of numbers and announcement of uh, ammonia plan so most of my questions are answered just uh, one clarity i wanted to check on liquids which you have mentioned it's better to look on uh, yearly basis but a sudden spike uh, this uh, quarter compared to any other quarter historically so can we expect such kind of things happening next year or uh, I just wanted to understand if there is a significant one off in this. Sorry, I I I did not uh, get your question right. So liquids the performance this quarter you mentioned that we need to look at a uh, yearly basis, right? Uh sorry, Lavanya, we 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 obviously we can't predict a particular spike in any one particular quarter. So I think Murad has explained that is you know uh a combination of things like uh uh you know product mix uh you know spot contract that might uh, turn up uh and so on so we can, obviously we can't predict the future uh in so much detail so rather than focusing on one particular quarter i think we take the full year and uh ex- you know extrapolate next year what do we think with the additional capacity coming on stream and so on i think we should get 
a, a pretty solid performance. Um, you know, so I wouldn't take one quarter's numbers and multiply by four, but I think it's a little more complex modeling of taking the extra capacity. Our normal guidance on uh, you know 3,000 rupees per uh, per kiloliter, uh, and and you know uh, if we know what the EBITDA margins are that we talked about. So that's probably the better way to approach it. Okay, okay, got it, sir. Also, just on the distribution part, I wanted to check one thing. So this time, I think gas distribution EBITDA was much better than uh, last quarter. Is it the right way of looking at it? Uh, last quarter. Uh, I think it was slightly softer in terms of uh, EBITDA contribution. Yes, you're right. In this quarter, we got procurement efficiencies. Uh, so again, uh, I have always said that for distribution, you have, if you are modeling and if you are trying to project, please take 3,000 rupees as a standard uh, EBITDA margin in distribution business. Because quarter to quarter, it might change. Sometimes it is 2,500, sometimes 3,000. 4,000, so it depends on what kind of efficiencies you are able to unlock in one particular quarter. But overall, if you look at the year, uh, I think 3,000 is a very good number uh, to look at uh, as far as uh, distribution business is concerned. As far as throughput is concerned, I think now is the time for us to take 1,100 as the rate of EBITDA. Yeah, yeah. Uh, throughput is clear. Uh, just the distribution part, if you look at the uh, overall yearly basis, how much would it be? 3,000 is the number. Yes, is that's that correct. Right? Okay, got it. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. All the best. Thank you. And the next question is from the line of Deep Mehta from Bank of India Mutual Funds. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations for a very robust set of numbers. Two questions. First is regarding our economics of our new ammonia plant. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but we have roughly 36,000 MT of capacity and with 3x throughput, we can do 8,000 tons of volumes. Uh, and if I multiply it by 1,000, the number comes around 11 crore. So where are we missing in the calculation? Yeah, you're right. So uh, revenue potential is around 11 crores, correct? Per month, not per year. Achha, this is per month number. Okay, very clear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, it's per month. And second question is regarding, uh, slightly top-down question. Recently, the ruling government has announced that they are planning to supply natural gas to each and every house household via pipeline. Is it even possible? What percentage of it is possible? And you, you tell me. <laughs> I am not in that business, so I will not be able to help but, you out on that. Uh, as an insider, you obviously you interact with the clients and you have better idea about the... Uh, no, about no, we are focused on propane and yeah. we see enough, again I am saying, repeating, that energy transition, uh, what you are talking about is cooking, right? Yeah, but we that is still 90% of India. We are talking about the application of LPG as a gas. Where the government is doing it at most, it is the only gas where government writes you a check it is the only gas where government gives you first time user, first cylinder free. It is the only gas where government is investing 100% in pipeline grids. So there is enough push, enough, more than enough push. Uh, in fact, last 10 years has led to a fantastic uh, change in uh, the LPG growth story because of various initiatives taken by the government. So that's where I rest my case as far as propane is concerned. Enough on the ground, enough potential to grow, and enough uh, push by the government, continuous push, not one-time push. Uh, very clear, sir. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you. In the interest of time, this was last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Raj Chandaria for closing comments. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you for all your questions. I hope we have been able to answer most of them. Uh, now, in, in summary, all the developments that I outlined, um, you know, in terms of our expansion programs and uh, the tanks that, uh, and storage facilities that we have brought online and we expect to bring online in, in the next year, really position us extremely well to continue executing on our mission, uh, which is to store and distribute these bulk liquids and gases in a safe and sustainable manner. 
And uh, you know, while we do so, we also remain confident that we can deliver good financial results in FY25 as well uh, and into FY26 uh, as well. So thank you so much to all of you for participating in this call, and we will speak next quarter. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Orient Capital, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.